Okay, if everybody can hear me and see the slides that I'm sharing, can you just type something into the chat box? Okay. Okay, thank you so much for joining me. If you have uh, seen my last presentation in August, then you know that my name is Nadine Sergeyev and I am the supervising librarian here at the Philip Roth Personal Library at the Newark Public Library in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, last time we took a very brief tour of some of the objects in the library. And now we're gonna do a very, very short overview of some of the very interesting items that we found inside. This is intended to be a very lighthearted and entertaining uh, process of discovery. Um, all of the items that we found inside of the books have been removed and placed into folders. And those are inventoried in a finding aid, and that can be accessed from the Philip Roth Personal Library website, which I will explain in just a little bit. And then when you're looking up these books in the catalog record, there are cross references to all of these materials in the notes field in those records, and I will demonstrate that for you as well. And please feel free to post questions at any time, and we'll get to those at the end of the short presentation. Um, and if there's anything that you can think of later on, you can always email me and I will give you that email address at the end. I will usually respond within a day. Um, so what exactly did we find? Uh, we found letters, photographs, book reviews, clippings, sticky notes, index cards, dried flowers, bookmarks, maps, receipts, and even opera tickets. Um, so what you see here in the list, that's most of what we found. Um, and usually if a letter accompanied a book, um, Philip Roth would insert it in, in that particular book. Uh, the same would be true for uh, clippings and book reviews. He also received many letters from editors and publishers requesting blurbs about uh, new books. And many authors uh, sent their books uh, to Roth for review. So if he got a letter that accompanied a book, that letter usually went inside of that book. Um, so let me just show you the Philip Roth Personal Library website is prpl.npl.org. And once you're on this page on the left is what it looks like. Um, on the top there, you will hit the research tab. And that will take you to all the links that you'll need for either the three finding aids for the collection or for the shelf list or for the catalog record. Uh, so I am just gonna take you to the library catalog. So that would be um, the second link um, in the box below. When you do that, it's catalog.npl.org. And this is the homepage of the catalog. Um, it's actually quite simple. So in the second box, you, the drop down menu, you would select the Philip Roth Personal Library. And then once you do that, all of your results will be filtered according to that collection. And then how do you know, once you're looking for a book, um, whether that particular book contains ephemera or any markings. You're gonna to have to pay attention to the notes field. So here I've um, uh, put a red box around the notes field. Sometimes there's more than one. Uh, the note field is usually at the bottom of the record just before you see the call number. Uh, so if you look at this one carefully, it's a book called History Wars and Every single record will tell you uh, where we found the book. So if you look at this notes field, it'll say Connecticut box 229. That's how we packed the boxes. So this book just happened to be in box 229. Uh, it was from Roth's uh, residence in Connecticut. And it was from a room that was actually built like a library with metal shelving. So that's why it says library. That was the library room. And then if you look right above that, um, it'll tell you, contains marking and underlining and notes on the verso of the book jacket. 
um, which was then removed and filed with the Philip Roth collection, which are a bunch of folders in boxes, and it tells you exactly what box and folder that the book jacket is in. So whenever you're looking through a, a catalog record, um, you'll notice that. Um, so down below at the location, it'll say main uh, reference Philip Roth. If anything says um, storage area, that usually is a pretty clear indicator that that book does not contain any markings or uh, marginalia. This is an example of a very early catalog record. So when we, we first started, we first got the books from Roth's apartment in New York City. That was only about 900 books. So we had time and we were carefully going through them and actually indicating which pages the markings were on. When we got the remainder, 6,000 of those from Roth's home in Connecticut, we realized there wasn't enough time to do any of that. If we were still going along with that method, we'd probably still be working on that and indicating page numbers. So most of the notes fields will just be very basic and just say contains markings. And that's basically it. Uh, I did have a question last week and somebody asked if there was a way to distinguish whether a book had a lot of markings or the very scant amount of markings. No, not really. Um, it'll just say markings and then it's up to the researcher to schedule an appointment to look at the book and then they can determine for themselves. And then note also that there is a um, shelf list. So on the Philip Roth Personal Library website, right above the link to the catalog, there's a link to the shelf list. This is helpful for researchers who uh, want to know what books by a certain author are contained within the collection. Um, this is listed alphabetically. So if you want to see all the books by Faulkner or Fitzgerald or Toni Morrison, um, it's very easy to see them this way. Uh, the only catch here is that it won't tell you whether these books contain markings. So it's a two-step process of looking them up here and then consulting the catalog and looking in the notes field to see uh, um, if there's any additional information. So in the Philip Roth Personal Library, we have three archival collections. Uh, the first is called Donated Materials Related to Philip Roth. And what that is, is anybody throughout the world that might have a letter from Roth or an inscribed copy of a book, or even a copy of a Bucknell alumni magazine that might mention Roth. They're free to send that over to us. Uh, we add it into the finding aid and you know we always indicate who the donor of that particular material was. And so it's just, um, um, this whole gathering of different kinds of materials. Um, it's still small because the library just opened in June. So we're um, still collecting materials and are, we are always grateful for them. The second is a collection of typescripts that were donated by Roth's colleague, Joel Canero. So you'll also find those on the Philip Roth Personal Li Library website. And then the third is the one that I'm talking about today the loose items that we found inside. And that is just, we just generally call that the Philip Roth collection. Note that when you're looking at this finding aid, it will include items other than all the loose um, pieces of paper we found in books. Because the bequest included more than just books, we received foreign language titles, we received posters that were hanging on Roth's walls along with framed photographs and a large collection of diplomas and certificates. Those are all included in this collection as well. And it's searchable and organized by category. So if you click on correspondence or notes, for example, you'll get an alphabetical list of a relevant material. Uh, the records are very basic, so they really won't tell you about the contents of letters or summaries of correspondence, uh, but you'll get a basic idea. I will be covering marginalia in a separate presentation, uh, but here is just a sneak peek. Um, 
This is just one of the books, which I would say contains quite a significant amount of marking. Um, it's a copy of Reading Philip Roth, where Roth very heavily edits the content. I could speak for hours just on the notes themselves. Uh, so we, here we have the cover of the book and then the first page of the chapter where Roth is crossing out parts of sentences and adding a year to um, the title of the chapter. And then here is another glimpse into the book, pages six and seven and pages 10 and 11. So here we see more corrections, um, some notes on the side, um, a paragraph is crossed out. Most of the books that I've seen in the collection, they contain underlining. He had a habit of putting a vertical line next to a paragraph to emphasize it. Sometimes circling, sometimes a star and notes on in the margins and then also notes on the first page of a book. Another sneak peek just into annotations. Um, this is a book called Prague Pictures. Um, and again, just a teaser. We found several book jackets that contain notes. Sometimes the notes we could really find quickly because they were just on the underside of one of the flaps. Um, however, some were hidden really just along the back of the spine. So there were quite a few that we missed the uh, first time that we were processing the books because there was so little time and we were going so quickly. So we've been going through them a second time and now we're going through them a third time just to make sure there's nothing at all that we missed. Um, and I do wanna point out that Roth himself stipulated that there is no photography allowed of any of the marginalia or notes. So the library can do it for exhibition and publicity purposes, but if you're a researcher coming in to look at materials, only handwritten notes are allowed. <clears throat> and um, the notes that are on the backs of the book jackets, they don't always correspond to the book that is housed underneath the jacket. Sometimes they are uh, notes to, um, to a book that Roth was working on. So for example, we have two dust jackets that contain notes to American Pastoral and I Married a Communist. And the notes existed everywhere. So the notes weren't just on sticky notes. Uh, they weren't just in margins. They were not limited to loose pieces of yellow lined paper we found inside. Anything that you could think of that could be a piece of scrap paper he really used, he had used whatever was around. So magazine renewal cards, receipts, backs of letters on promotional materials, and even on this new mover's guide. Uh, so in case you're curious, um, the item on the left came from the, the Goncourt journal, the item in the middle from the proper study of mankind by Isaiah Berlin. And then the magazine renewal card on the right uh, to Helen Back by Ian Kershaw. And Roth's handwriting can be a little tricky to make out sometimes. So it was a little neater when he was younger. Um, I was able to make out here, he wrote, um, or the catch terms bourgeois and reactionary in the communist press. And then we found many, many bookmarks. Uh, Roth really seemed to treasure this uh, particular bookmark on the left that the Newark Library produced several years ago. And we found many of these inside of books. So for example, inside a copy of The Plague, inside Moby Dick, inside The Ghost Map by Stephen Johnson, and inside Alan Brinkley's Voices of Protest. And here on the right, um, there are bookmarks from shops that 
Roth might have visited. So the Green Bookshop in New York was found in a copy of The Light in August by William Faulkner. And invitations. So here we have a copy to President Obama's inauguration, which is found in a catalog of um, drawings by Philip Gustin and an invitation to Saul Bellow's birthday party, his 85th birthday party, that was uh, tucked inside a copy of Ravelstein. And what else? There were, um, oops, that's a, okay, typo. That should say maps and itineraries. Um, items also document Roth's travels. So Roth visited Eastern Europe in the 1970s and tucked into books were, um, a Prague hotel room card, many street maps of Prague, and a travel itinerary from 1972 when Roth stayed in Venice, Vienna, Prague, and London. Uh, so the itinerary was found inside a copy of Photos Austria from 1972. And the maps were inside Kafka Diaries and a Prague travel book. And the hotel itinerary was in a copy of both The Ladies and the Gentlemen by William Donaldson. Other ephemera included Israeli currency and an envelope of postcards of Newark. The postcards were found inside a calendar celebrating 325 years of Newark. And the paper money was found in Stanley Elkins, Criers, and Kibitzers. There were many book receipts. And there were also lists. So when Roth was working on a book, such as Fight Against America, for example, um, he was very thorough in his research. So. Some of the books contain printouts of books on, <coughs> on a certain topic. So for example, printouts of books about stamp collecting, which Roth then purchased, and he purchased many books used to aid in his research. Uh, so when you are visiting the library and you see some newer books on the shelves, most likely those were sent to Roth by publishers or other authors because most of what he acquired for his research were used books. And this item on the right was found in a, a booklet called The Story of FDR Stamps. And there were also opera tickets and a tenant membership card. So the opera tickets were found inside a book called Florence, An Appreciation of Her Beauty. And his father's tenant membership card from Elizabeth from Elizabeth, New Jersey was um, actually found in a copy of Goodbye Columbus. And then there were many personal lists which were um, very cute. So inside a copy of The Rise of American Democracy by Sean Wilentz, um, Roth apparently had a fast food craving. So it's a plain cheeseburger, FF, French fries, and a caramel shake. And I'm not sure what the SHA underneath is for. He also created many lists uh, when he was traveling from New York to Connecticut. Roth spent his summers in Connecticut writing. So often the lists included batteries, medication, and chargers. This one's pretty neat. It says dentist, barber, office chair, cushions, car, tables, Paul Stewart, Yado, and what I initially thought was Bach, but I think that says Barb. And I had to look it up, but Paul Stewart is a, a men's shoe store. And this was found inside um, Schlesinger's The Age of Roosevelt. And here we have some flowers. So if you've already visited the Philip Roth Personal Library in the reading room, we have displays on the shelves. And there's a selection of wildflower field guides. And inside one of them, a field guide to wildflowers, um, almost every other page had these dried flower specimens. 
And after reading a little bit more, um, I learned that Roth loved to walk around his property in Connecticut. And he also inquired about local trails. So he would bring one of these books with him. And then him and a colleague would go around identifying these wildflowers and collecting them. So each one of these had to be removed from the book and placed into a clear sleeve. And then there were many clippings, uh, book reviews of Roth's own books, reviews of other books and news articles. Here's one that Roth saved and was inserted into a copy of The Dying Animal. Um, it's about Princess, who you might not know was a local Litchfield County, Connecticut celebrity. Princess was a crow who resided at the Sharon Audubon Center, and she played a supporting role in the human stain. The article notes that Roth visited the bird regularly. And here on the right, tucked into a copy of Portnoy's complaint was a letter from Mrs. John Hughes in Wisconsin. And she writes, Enclosed is one unused copy of your book. I deeply regret that I parted with $1.56 for this piece of trash. All of the critics who rave so about your book are, in my opinion, as equally sick as you are. Uh, your piece of literature is pure pornography. You can rest assured that I will have nothing to do with anything that has your name attached to it. And then there was much correspondence. Um, so we have correspondence from other authors and from friends on display. Um, so some of those you can see when you visit and others are tucked away into the finding aid. Uh, so here on the right is just one of the many postcards from author Don DeLillo. He writes, I paid a visit to the silent chamber at the Guggenheim and hope to return. It's a silence we're thinking about we're thinking into. I may move in for six weeks or so if Barbara will agree to bring me roots and berries every three days. Why I write, a full pleasure to read. And here on the left is a note from designer Milton Glazier. Glazier produced the cover art for several of Roth's novels, including The Humbling, Nemesis, Exit Ghost, and The Plot Against America. Um, in this book, Milton writes, a dark year makes us realize how much we depend on the affection of our friends. I hope you like this sweet little book about our ever-changing city. And that book was 100 New Yorkers. And then DeLillo's postcard was found inside a copy of Paula Fox's Borrowed Finery. And then from letters that we found from Roth to Glazier, we know that the author was very involved about the appearance of his dust jackets and made sure they were just as he wanted them before they were printed. Roth had specifications regarding font, color, and position for the blocks of text. In this memo, Roth was insistent that an orange color still wasn't orange enough. Um, and the second item here is from a student expressing gratitude for being permitted to drop one of Roth's classes. And that was found inside a copy of seven contemporary short novels. And if you wanted to learn more about what Roth was reading in college, we found a few class assignments. Uh, Roth appeared to be a very diligent scholar and he took careful notes. And this was found inside uh, Salinger's Franny and Zoe. And photographs. So tucked between pages, we found photographs, many of which um, Roth had many copies printed, um, but we're not so sure about all of them. So the Library of Congress, which does have Roth's papers probably has copies of all of these, but we're not sure about the one on the left because I hadn't seen this one before. This was likely taken in the 1950s and we do know that Roth was working as a summer camp counselor in 1952 and 1953. Um, there are no markings on the back, no notes. So we're not sure, but it's just, it's just a guess that it might've been taken there. And then most of these photographs that you see here were actually, we found them hidden inside of a large uh, hardcover road atlas in Roth's uh, writing studio in Connecticut. So as we went through the collection, we had many questions. So 
why were these in the road atlas? Were they there for safekeeping or was he trying to flatten them out? So that's just a, a little look into some of the items that we found. Uh, thank you very much for watching and please follow our social media accounts and stay tuned for upcoming programs. I will be working on another presentation about the marginalia that probably won't be done until end of November or early December. And when you visit the website prpl.npl.org, um, make sure you take a look at the programs page because we have two outstanding events planned for November, so please register now. On November 4th, the Philip Roth Annual Lecture with Ayat Akhtar. And then on November 16th, um, we will be re revisiting the Yeshiva Conference of 1962. We will be playing audio tape from that conference, little clips that probably many people have not heard before. Um, that is called Conflicts Depicting Race and Ethnicity in Fiction, 1962 and 2021, Philip Roth, Ralph Ellison, and Pietro Di Donato. Um, the in-person events will also be live streamed, but make sure you register. Um, I will be taking any questions that you have now here if you want to type them into the chat box. Um, I'll wait a few minutes for that. And if you think of anything later on, please do email me at prpl.npl.org. And again, my uh, name is Nadine, and thank you so much for tuning in.